the biggest concern that I hear from people about not doing surgical assist MSE is that they're afraid that their cheekbones won't expand if they do all of the surgical cuts. A lot of people come to this appliance out of a desire not only to correct their airway, but also to sort of improve their aesthetics. And they consider expansion of these bones right here to be one of the primary aesthetic benefits of the MSE. Will they, uh, will the surgical assist that you do interfere with the expansion of these bones with the MSE? Uh, Dr. Ting and I, we've had this discussion as well. And, uh, and I, I feel that I'm the contrarian to that philosophy or that uh, notion that uh, the cheekbones expand uh, in that manner. Um, one, uh, if you really were to uh, expand your cheekbones laterally, um, usually that is an undesired uh, aesthetic effect. Because if you take your cheekbones and spread them out laterally, it actually rounds your face out. And most people don't want a moon, moon face. Um, I think what people are thinking is more anterior projection. Now, that is something that is an aesthetic move that, you know, plastic surgeons will put cheek implants so that you have more anterior projection, meaning the cheekbones come out more forward. Um, making your face go sideways, again, is something that is literally so undesired that when we do trauma patients who've had those fractures, it's so very important to decrease the facial width because if you were to allow those bones to splay, the patient is going to look abnormal. So, um, so I'm a contrarian to that, that widening your face that way is a desired effect. Um, Second, I also feel that, again, with that anatomy, and I, I can go back to it or if you edit it back in, the zygomatical maxillary buttress is the resistance to maxillary expansion. The cheekbones also have the zygomatical frontal uh, junction and the zygomatical temporal junction which goes in front of the ear, okay? So these are very, you know, any surgeon who is, uh, done any kind of cheekbone surgery will tell you these are very strong, dense areas of bone that are hard to break. So just releasing here is not going to take away the resistance of the zygomatical frontal and the zygomatical temporal junctions of the cheekbone. Is that clear or clear as mud? No, no, that's clear. Okay. So uh, again, I'm a contrarian to the fact uh, that you're going to get any kind of significant cheekbone expansion with this procedure. Now, you will get some lower mid-face enhancement as the, um, as the maxilla and the nasal floor expand. Say, for example, when people smile, you really want your teeth to fill the, the empty spaces in your mouth. Uh, and Dr. Tang can probably speak better to this, where you have those dark buccal corridors. And I think you really get... Um, a, an aesthetic enhancement when you expand the maxilla and you broaden uh, the uh, show of the teeth in the mouth. I think that's a great uh, enhancement as well. And, I, and Dr. Tang, you can also speak to this. Um, you may get a little bit of uh, downward and forward movement with while you're expanding, which could give you a little bit more what we call AP projection of the maxilla, which actually uh, can appear as the cheekbones have come forward. So there's some added benefits of that. And then again, Dr. Ting can, can speak more uh, intelligently about that. Actually, very interesting to talk about because because vast majority of adult patients come back and see, hey, my cheekbone got enhanced. So it could be what you're saying, the downward form movement that enhances the cheekbone. Okay. Maybe slightly widening, maybe, um, but not to the point that it's obvious why in the face. Um, I have a mom actually very interesting. It's a, it's a the kid, I think is 11 years old or 12 year old boy. He's in between phase one and phase two. But mom come back and complain about he can't breathe at night. So we did ex, um, put an MS in there without surgical assist, of course, without quarter puncture because he's only, he's only 11 around that age. And we expanded, we did 20 turns, which 
three, like three, a little bit three and a half millimeter extension. And the mom say he's completely cured from the uh, breathing issue. So I told mom, great, let's do another 20 turn. The mom stopped me and say, no, I don't want it because I see his cheekbone comes out too much. Maybe that's what you, what trying to say is that he started getting those moon face effect on the cheekbone. Maybe that's the case. So mom say, I want to stick with 20 turns, that's it. No more turns. He's cured for the airway problem. I don't want the face to change more. So the mom said that he, she noticed a lot of change in the mid face. Dr. Ting, how old was that patient? I think he's about 11 years old. 11, 12, between phase one and phase two. So I think, again, skeletal maturity here is, you got to factor that in. Mm -hmm. uh, so the cheekbones of an 11 year old are not going to be as fused as the cheekbones of a 20 year old. Absolutely true. Maybe in a case such as that, where, you know, the, you know, just for the sake of illustrative purposes, where the bone is more like clay than it is like cement, then you possibly could get more facial expansion that way. I'm saying statistically and the adult population where you've reached skeletal maturity, I do not feel, uh, in my opinion, that you're going to get any significant uh, cheekbone lateral expansion. I, I think mm -hmm. that the zygomatical frontal and the zygomatical temporal uh, junctions are too strong and you're just not, I don't think you're going to overcome that with a device in the mouth. That, that, um, and, and, and again, I, and I don't feel that facial widening is a desired result. And as the, the mom was stopping you, again, you don't want to make moon faces out of most people. And most people aren't looking for that. Unless there was some kind of, um, there are some people who have zygomatic uh, deficiencies and maybe in those rare cases, you want to bring them out wider if there, if there is a narrowness to the face that's, uh, you know, congenital or part of a, a syndrome of some sort. But uh, for the general, general population, I think the people that we're trying to reach with this, uh, you're not really looking for your face to become round. Right. In fact, I need to lose some weight. I'm looking at these pictures now. I, I want to just go, <laughs> go run three miles right now. I got increased facial widening. It's from the wrong face. <laughs> not from a minute I see, more from a cheeseburger. But, but yeah, so most people don't <laughs> have round faces. So. Just, just take out the cheese. Then you'll find <laughs>